to the lounge of Travify Academy, where we get to hear from travel industry voices and experts to learn more about their story and what they see on the horizon for travel professionals. I'm Stephanie Grice, and our guest is Azdeen El Mustakim, who is co-founder of Destination Morocco. So welcome to the lounge, Azdeen, and thanks for joining us. This is our first podcast of 2022, so we're excited. Excited Thank to have you. Thank you so much. I'm extremely excited as well, Stephanie. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for having us today. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm really excited just to talk about your how you built your amazing travel business. But also, we will for sure talk about Morocco. I know in the past year, I've heard of so many advisors going to Morocco, but also sending clients there. So I'm really excited to just kind of dig into what you're seeing, the trends for 2022. But before we dive into that, though, I just really want to talk about how did you get started in the travel industry and how did Destination Morocco come to be? Well, Destination Morocco, really what inspired it is actually our son, uh, because we are immigrants and we go back and forth and back and forth between the U.S. and Morocco. And the longer you stay, in my case, in the U.S., it's kind of you start losing kind of, you know, track of friends and family and changes. So and I didn't want him to go through that. I want him to always have that, you know, background of Morocco. So when he grows up and, you know, he'll be able to go back and forth. And then, you know, he can decide, you know, whether anywhere he wants to stay and he'll still have those, you know, roots in Morocco. And, you know, luckily for us, we were able to take him, you know, a couple of times and he still loves it. He still talks about it. He talks about the tours that we did. He talks about his experience with the camel ride and, you know, visiting all different cities and meeting all different people. So that's what really, really inspired us to, uh, you know, co-found Destination Morocco, me and my wife back in uh, 2016. Yeah. That is so awesome. So what was it, what did it look like for you when you first started creating the business when you and your wife decided we want to do this? What were the first steps that you started taking? Well, the, it's it's really hard because um, I have a lot of friends and I'm, you know, I was born and raised in Marrakesh and 90% of the people in Marrakesh are, you know, working in the tourist industry. So I grew up in the tourism industry. My friends, you know, that I went to school with now are, you know, hotel managers, owners, uh, bazaars, tour guides. So uh, it was really good, you know, an easy kind of transition for me to build my network, um, doing it that way. Um, you know, but the difficult part is in the US, it, you know, just marketing it is a little different than how you do it back home. And building that, you know, that network and that flow, uh, that's, that's, that was the challenge for us. You know, uh, it took us a little bit of years to get it, you know, to where it needs to go. And, um, you know, we're very fortunate and we're happy where we at. So. Yeah, that's really cool. And that's a really good point too. The networking, that's probably the biggest thing, you know, just getting yes. started and, and getting your group together. And, um, what did you find for marketing wise that worked really well? Well, I would absolutely say that the conventions go into conferences, either, you know, it's an ASTA event or it's a CCRA event, or it's, you know, travel quest network or travel leaders network. Those events are extremely important to us you know the vendors the tour operators so that's what really works quite a bit for us and you get to meet the agents that you know sell your destination and, and that's really really important so yeah that's really cool so when you go to um, a lot of the events do you go as an advisor or do you also have you ever had like your own booth and you're trying to connect with them because you kind of come from both sides because you work with yes. both so how do yeah. you navigate both of those it's it's kind of tricky. I um, I was gonna have a booth in one of the events with the with CCRA back in uh, I believe it was in 2020, but then the event was canceled. So, but I'm looking for the next event. Um, it's I would say most likely it's gonna be this year. Um, then we're gonna have our own booth, and there's a different way again to get it done because you gotta have all the uh, the marketing material, you know, the brochures, everything ready from A to Z for you to have a really good and successful event. And the events that I have attended in the past, I just go to see what the other uh, vendors are doing and how they are doing it. You know, it's if it's a hotel, if it's Disney, if it's a cruise line. So and then, you know, you just do your homework and research. And so when it's, uh, you know, the time come for us, we know exactly what to do. So I'm looking forward to it as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. And this should be the year. This is. Yes, a, absolutely. Yeah, now absolutely. We're yeah. And hopefully we're, we're really learning to navigate things and, you know, the conferences, we know what to do and all of that. And so what did you, what, what, what was your business like um, during the past two years when everything, did you have to shift your marketing goals? What did that look like for you? Yeah. Um, 
it's difficult just like everybody else, but you adjust. And in our case, um, one thing that we, you know, um, had to keep doing is, you know, just being present, just being in front of the clients, in front of the audience. Um, you know, the same, you know, like uh, Angela said in the last episode, you, you know, those are the things that you cannot just cut. You have to keep going. You have to keep continuing, you know, doing things that you're doing, you know, because you don't want your clients to look at, you know, your social media and they see that, you know, there's a gap. There's an absence of few months, six months, three months, then you really lose your credibility. So in terms of the pandemic, it was challenging for all of us, but the, it gave us an extremely good opportunity to take advantage of, which is the time. So we never stopped any social media. We actually doubled you know, on everything that we do behind the scene. We would, we have been busier than ever, uh, you know, in the last year and a half or almost two years. So um, there's always something to do in the company, you know, just, you know, improve in, you know, the, the workflow and everything else. So, you know, whether it's, you know, a supplier or a hotel that, you know, you know, you keep checking, you know, are they still in business and, uh, you know, are there any more hotels that are open that are good, you know, fit for us and stuff like that. So there's always things to do. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. That's what a lot of people says their their busyness has changed. And, and now it's getting really crazy because you have the behind the scenes that's yes. been very busy, but now everyone's coming in. So it's a very good problem to have, but it's Absolutely. yeah. And, and that was a good point you brought up too about, you know, the supply other suppliers checking in, making sure are they still active, are they yes. still going? And that just it makes me think we were talking about before with Danielle talking about, you know, those emails, keeping your lights yes. on, you know. Absolutely. It's, yeah, reminder to keep. And so do you have that? Do you make sure beside outside of social media to make check in with clients or agents yes. that you work with? Yes, we do. And in, in our case, we always have, it's like almost on a daily basis where I have to make calls to Morocco just to keep checking in. How is the situation? What's new? What's, you know, what's trending? What's going to happen? You know, the lockdown, what's, you know, those things, they change almost on a weekly basis. And we have to stay on top of it. And, you know, also, been present in, in on Facebook groups, you know, some people, they, they post stuff about Morocco, they don't know. So you got to just give them the right information, because a lot of misinformation out there, but you just make sure that, hey, you know, this is the latest, out, you know, uh, update. And, you know, this is the documents or the article that backs it up and, you know, confirms it. So, you know, this, it's, uh, it's, there's always something new to, to do and, you know, read and study. So, yeah. So many changes. And so yes. with that, what is traveling to Morocco look like right now? So for everyone listening, it's January 6, 2022. So I know this will probably change if you're listening to yes. this a weeks later. But what is it like currently? Currently, actually, Morocco, they, 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 they shut down travel in and out. And it's been the case since the first time that, you know, the, the, the new variant came out out of South Africa. So November 21st, that's when the lockdown started. So there's no everything is suspended as of today. So, um, and it's suspended until January 31st. However, um, my source is telling me it's not, it's going to be extended an additional month. So it's probably going to be reopened March 1st. Now, if you are a Moroccan overseas, you still be able to travel back home, but for tourists, it's closed as of, you know, still closed right now. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. And before, do you think um, when people are traveling prior to the lockdown, do you think the any safety measures that they had to do, travelers had to do, do you think it'll be the same once the lockdown comes is lifted? Oh, absolutely. The safety measures will exist for mm -hmm. the rest of 2022, probably most of 2023 as well, uh, which is a really good thing. So it's safety is extremely important. Um, masks are not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, when you travel, you still have to have your, you know, vaccination cards. It's the same. It's not going to change, but we're going to be more adapted. We're going to be kind of, you know, living with it. So um, it's, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And are there any types of um, clients that you are seeing right now who are booking or who are really like, I want to go when it opens up? Like, are there, is there a certain type of client that you're seeing first come, come up? I would say the luxury. The luxury is the first one. And uh, when we were open, even, even before, I would say around March, April, May, um, Morocco was busy. It was still closed, restricted, but there were still tourists, a lot of tourists, even up to November when they closed. I mean, it looked like, you know, back to 2019. Uh, 
and um, there's no discounts anywhere you go in hotels. Everything is busy. It's really, really, really packed. And the other thing that we have noticed in Morocco when it was open, it's the international tourists and also the local tourists because they've been locked down for quite some time. They want to go out as well. They want to go to, you know, to the desert. They want to do the camera rides. They want to go and experience everything that the tourists would experience. So it was, it was really, really good and very challenging sometimes, yes. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point that you kind of have both, you know, angles coming, people coming in and then the people who are already there yes. are wanting to go yeah. explore too, to get out. Yes. Um, and what are, what are some of your tips besides obviously working with you to help out with booking to Morocco, but for anyone who's interested in booking um, to Morocco, either for this year, are there any tips that you have for them? For this year, I would say book um, after May book after May. Um, you know, that's, that's what I would recommend because if you look at the lockdown, it is, it will be extended an additional month. So it will be open March 1st, but then again, um, the curveball is, is going to be Ramadan and Ramadan, which is, you know, it's a, it's a holy month. Um, people are fasting. And also if we have seen the last two years, um, there's always a lockdown in Ramadan. So this year is definitely not going to be any different, but, just to assume that's exactly what's going to happen. So just to be careful. So um, that's what I would do. You know, just, um, you know, it's going to be another lockdown, most likely in, in um, first April. So they're going to open, they're going to close again, just like they did last year. Then they're going to reopen in May. So that's what I really see. Yeah, yeah. That's great. That's good insight. And have you noticed too that when they were open and when they plan to open again, do you expect most things to be open, like museums and places to go? Are have most of them been or are well, the way they? Still? That's a really really good question, Stephanie. The way they did it in the past, I think it was really good because they gradually did it, uh, opened it uh, in terms of the museum because a lot of you know the tours museums are are a must. Uh, they are in all the itineraries that we have. So um, I don't see the challenge in the museums. I think once they open, the, it's going to be open to everybody. It's going to be 100% open. Right now, even though it's closed, they're still you know, conducting weddings. Restaurants are still open, but they have limited the capacity. So, um, and, and you know, I think after May, it's going to be a lot easier in terms of restrictions. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And so on that, on talking about all the different things you can do, if you had to choose, this is going to be the hardest question. If you had to choose out of all of the itineraries um, and tours that you put together, which one is your favorite or what are some must things? If it's your first time going, you have to do this. Okay. Uh, I know this is going to, it's, I know it's a hard, it's, a it's, it's, one. it's, it's, <laughs> it's a really, really good question. Um, <laughs> if it's your first time going, I would absolutely must recommend visiting the imperial cities, which is Marrakesh, Fes, Meknes, and Rabat. Fes is definitely the, if, if you have to see just one city, I'll say Fes because it is the oldest and it still has most of the Moroccan traditions and the, the Jewish traditions as well. So Fes, I would definitely say it's, it's the heart of Morocco in terms of tourism and in terms of tradition. Um, it's, it's an amazing city. If you see it, if you, when you visit, you're not going to forget it. I mean, it's just, it's, and you, and you have to have a tour guide. I mean, when you go solo travelers, I respect them. I like what they, you know, how they do it and stuff, but you have to have a tour guide because tour guides, that's what really make the tours. They make the tours, um, you know, because there's a lot of information. Downtown Fest has over 1100 streets. You're not going to be able to see it in a few hours or in the day or so. So it's, it's, it's a must. Now, Marrakesh, uh, that's what I'm, you know, my, my city, I was born and raised in Marrakesh, so I'm a little bit biased, but I love Marrakesh. The vibe, it's the nightlife, the food, it's just, it's, it's, there's no other city like it, and it's just incredible. Me, uh, Meknes, it's kind of in between Marrakesh and Fez. Uh, it's a small city, very nice, a lot of nice people, and also it's, it's definitely must-see. Rabat is the capital and it's a little bit, you know, it looks a little different, but it's also very nice. Um, so that's my recommendation. Um, if you have an itinerary, um, I would always recommend at least eight days. So if you can do 10, that's perfect because doing 10 days, it'll give you the ability to see the Northern side of Morocco. Um, and also it'll give you the opportunity to see the South side, the Atlas mountains. So it'll give you a really, really um, good, 
picture of what really Morocco is and the landscape and the, the diversity and the change and the beauty of the country, uh, that's what I would recommend. Uh, personally, 10 days. Uh, if you cannot, then just do seven days. Maybe do just the north side one time, do the south side one time. And um, that way, because they're completely different, completely different. So it's, uh, yeah, that's what I would recommend. That's awesome. That sounds great. So pretty much what you're telling us is we need to book um, our trip here soon. <laughs> yes, definitely, <laughs> Stephanie. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> That is so awesome. Well, um, one one other thing too is um, outside of going back to kind of the business side of um, with, um, you know, navigating through just the travel side of it, but for your business also, are there any goals that you have this year for your business or anything that you're focusing on in 2022? Oh, absolutely. This is this is very important. You, you have to have goals. Um, you know, personally, one of my goals is to, you know, just uh, do the podcast. We started it last year. We kind of slow down, but I'm I'm super excited to do the podcast. It's uh, called Destination Morocco Podcast, and it's really for everybody who's you know struggling to to come up with an itinerary to Morocco, whether it's an FIT, whether it's a group tour, you know, private tour, escorted tour, weddings, golf tours, surfing tours, um, you know, and we create some the amazing itineraries using obviously Travel Five. Um, without a doubt, I love Travify. So we, you get a chance to see Morocco like local. So if you have been to Morocco before, I, I promise you, you have not really seen it until you have gone with us because uh, we're going to do some fam trips this year and you will be spoiled. So it's going to be incredible. Incredible. Yeah. That's really cool. And how exciting with the podcast. It's, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be so fun. And for those of you who are listening, you should check out our YouTube channel so you can see um, as Dean's setup because it is so nice. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I can tell your microphone even says Destination Morocco. Yes. Yes. That is branding. a nice. Yeah, yes. Thank what you, a, thank you. It's a great touch. Thank I love you. that. No, it's so cool. And yeah. And, and it's, I love how you're also thinking outside of the box when it comes to marketing, you know, and um, cause we've talked about that before on this podcast is just, you know, you could make a podcast, you know, it's, it's yes. free to do. And, you know, you just have to get your setup and then just go with it and, and it's marketing. So that's absolutely. Really cool. I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah, that's really awesome. cool. And well, I just want to thank you so much um, for joining us here today because it's really interesting just to learn. I, I love both sides of you know the business, how you're how you're doing things right now, navigating through this time, but also focusing on a destination and talking about Morocco because again, I have heard a lot. Have have you noticed um, a big increase in Morocco travel over the past few years? Yes, and the the funny thing. All the conventions that I have attended and, you know, I network with a lot of people. And as soon as they, I say Morocco, oh, I love it. Oh, my God, I want to go. I have a lot of people want to go and I have a group of, you know, 40, 50. So it's just it's it's incredible. Um, it, it's it's getting really, really more popular nowadays. So. That's yeah. awesome. I was going to say, I feel like I've even been hearing it more and more. And, and for those of you, too, um, listening, what how can they get in contact with you? What's your website? The website is destinationmorocco.co, or they can call me or, you know, Instagram at Destination Morocco or my cell phone, 713-480-8833. And we do, I personally build, um, you know, those itineraries on Travify. You know, it's, um, we have some amazing, amazing itineraries to Morocco. Yeah. Yes. That's really cool. Well, thank you so much again. And, and I promise we didn't pay him to say anything about Travify. Uh, so well, really I cool. Love it. I love it. Well, and the other thing for agents listening, if you, if they use Travify, you can send it over so they can copy it into their own account. Yes. Just makes it very nice. So Absolutely. That's perfect. But just want to thank you so much again for taking time, you know, to um, share more wealth of your knowledge of your business in Morocco with us. Thank and you. thank you so much to everyone tuning into this episode of the Lounge with Travify Academy. And thanks again to our special guest, Azdeen, for joining us here today. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of the latest episodes. And we hope you enjoyed our conversation today and join us again. But for now, stay safe and we'll catch you on the next flight. Thank you.